In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Gospel for today is in three sections. The first section sees Jesus going to seek baptism at the hands of John the Baptist. The second section, after Jesus comes out of the water, he is driven into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit and spends time being tested. And then finally he emerges from that period of silence and testing and comes out to make his proclamation. The time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe in the gospel. What trepidation he must have felt as he went to John the Baptist to seek baptism. Up until that point he had been uh, a normal young man going annually once he'd been bar mitzvahed down to the temple. Luke records that story of him hanging around um, seeking teaching in the temple, so perhaps not just an ordinary carpenter's son, going to synagogue, learning to be a carpenter in his father's workshop, perhaps standing out a little amongst the boys of his age, but nevertheless a boy in Nazareth but perhaps always knowing, perhaps hearing his mum talking perhaps a little about what surrounded his birth and his conception, but still the trepidation at which he went down to hear John the Baptist preach and going forward to baptism, perhaps sensing that this was the moment when everything was going to change. And as he comes up, out of the water from that purification ritual, setting aside the sins and the impurities of the past, coming up out of the water, the spirit, instead of allowing him back into his old life, sends him into his new life, but first a way to give time to reflect, to pray, to prepare, and as the scripture said, to be tested, to be tempted in some version. But the word in the Greek means to be tried out, to have one's metal tested. Not tempted in a horrible sense that you have in the Gospel of Luke and Matthew, where you have the devil tempting to try and get him off the path. You get the sense in Matthew and in Luke that the devil wants him to get off the path. But that's not quite what the word in Greek means. It means to see what the person's metal is, what they're capable of achieving. And if you think what Jesus had ahead of him, the task that he had ahead of him was not simply to be a rabbi, as difficult as that would be under occupation. The task that lay ahead of Jesus was to be the saviour of the world, to take on the powers of darkness on the cross. And in Mark's Gospel, he is driven into the wilderness to see what he is made of. The angels are there supporting him in his time of trial. And the word that Mark uses of the one who conducts the tests is Satan. And for Satan in, in English, in modern English, is a very bad word. But the origins of Satan is not quite as bad as we would believe. Satan originally was one of the angels in God's household, whose job it was to make sure justice was done. Um, you recall in Job, when Satan says, to God, Job is only a good man because you have rewarded Job rather richly. You just look and see what Job's life is like if you take all the good things away from him. Satan's job was to check on justice. Those people who have lived in a country where justice is taken for granted do wonder about why that's so necessary. But people who've grown up under corrupt regimes where they're never really sure where they're going to stand before a judge who's corrupt or not, value an angel 
who is on the side of righteousness. Satan's job was to make sure righteousness was done. And Satan, in Mark's Gospel, is there to see what the metal of Jesus was and whether he would be up for the task. And the angels are there to help him through. And he emerges from his time of testing and his time of trial. And he emerges and he comes out the other side and proclaims, now is the time. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the good news. We are not just this Lent, but over this last year have been in a time of testing beyond our imagining. We do not need to impose upon ourselves any Lenten disciplines that we haven't chosen. I have said to some, don't fast. Uh, and someone said to me, actually, I want to fast. So if you wish to fast and that helps you, please do. But don't feel that this Lent you ought to do anything further than what life itself is demanding of us all. Uh, fasting from meeting with one another, so to protect us all from the spread of this virus. Because this last year has been trying for all of us as we are having to stay away from friends and family and activities that have nurtured and sustain us. But we can ask God to help us learn from this experience. And through Zoom, through quiet, through telephones, through all sorts of ways that we can keep in touch with one another, or with God through prayer, through reading the Bible, that we can grow in the faith that nurtures each one of us. And I want to thank every one of you for the way in which you have been nurturing one another. We are so fortunate as Christians to have prayer. And that is one thing, I'm not laying it upon you as a discipline, but encouraging each one of you in this year of prayer to learn more how to grow in your relationship with our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. It is a gift. There's no right or wrong way to do it because each of us is an individual and a unique person. So I'm not laying it upon you as a burden, but saying to each one of you, take the opportunity that this enforced lockdown places upon you and learn a little bit more about prayer. Your parish priest may be able to help you, friends may be able to help you, all sorts of people may be able to give you guidance. You can Google prayer, there's so much resources out there, but give yourselves a little bit of time each day. And you know, the best person to help you is the Holy Spirit. Jesus, when he went into the wilderness, had the angels. We each have the Holy Spirit. Pray this one simple prayer with me. Loving God, you took your son Jesus by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. We perforce, because of lockdown, are all in a wilderness, not of our own making or choosing but we pray that you will pour your Holy Spirit on each of us in this difficult time. That although we didn't choose it, your Spirit may help us to grow closer to you and to one another, that we may learn to pray and to be places in which your light shines. In Jesus' name. Amen.